Hey there, folks. Listen, today's vlog is super important. It is about just how important it is to swatch before you start painting. So whether, especially if it's a new set that you're working with, whatever medium it may be, you've got to swatch, whether it's gouache, watercolor, color pencils, understand what you're working with. And I don't have to say this, but I'm going to say this anyway. There, there. <laughs> please um, subscribe to my channel and only if you like this content please like the this video and send me a comment and let me know what kind of videos you like um how is swatching bit for you anything would be great begin to tell you how useful and important it is to swatch your uh, materials whatever they may be whether this gouache or watercolor or color pencils whatever it is that you are using um, especially if you're using that medium for the first time just how important it is to swatch it so I'm going to show you this is my Vincent and Newton uh, the, the watercolor set that I have and um, as you can see it's it's been used quite heavily um, and doubled as a palette as well and some of the cakes as you can see have become little wells with a drought um, and so I'm going to show you how important swatching is and how it will change your game because you will get to know exactly what each color looks like and how it behaves so when you're creating an artwork you don't inadvertently use a color you don't want you sort of go back to your swatch card and uh, and you and you figure out that that's that's really what you want to do so i'm going to be showing you that today and uh, yeah on other news <laughs> um it's been a week since i got back from goa and um, yeah, I've been just working and putting together lots of interesting things. As you know, I'm launching, I know, I'm not sure if you know, but I'm launching a watercolor course, which is starting in just 10 days. And I've been doing a lot of prep for that, um, working with uh, watercolor again and getting comfortable because I've been working with gouache so much, right? You've seen a lot of my work has been with gouache recently so just sort of getting easing back into watercolor and rediscovering all the reasons why I love watercolor so much so the secret garden if you don't know yet I'm going to hit you up with the link do sign up I am opening this course um, on 28th of October it's a two-month course we meet every Saturday for three hours and paint together I deep dive into everything you need to know about watercolor, how much water to use, uh, what brushes, what mediums, what paper, techniques full of tips so that you'll be able to paint the most beautiful floral, sprigs, bouquets, meadows, wreaths. It's one of my favorite courses and um, so I'm going to hit you up with the link. So sign up. I still have some places left. So coming back to the video today, which is why it is so important to swatch before you start painting. All right, so I did swatch this when I first got it, uh, bought this a long time back, and uh, that's what I had swatched back then. And of course, I had the card, uh, the names, I had a little, the, the box sort of comes with a little strip with names of all the shades, so it was, and it was in the right sequence. But I bought this some time back um, and of course because of the look at how battered it is and gorgeous because it is so battered and well put to good use. Um, so yeah I no longer know what sequence the right sequence and things have moved around quite a bit. I've used a lot of these uh, a lot more 
so as i was saying it's super important to swatch it doesn't matter which watercolor you're using uh, i think even before you start attempting anything right it's important to get to know what the material is what the uh, shades are what the hues are and how does it really look so i've though this is not exactly watercolor paper the menorah sketchbook is just 180 gsm so i'm just going to make sure that i have so it does take a fair amount of water but i just want to make sure that so i'm just going to keep a little paper underneath and st and clip this in place before we do anything so you you figure out i mean it's best if you if you already have your watercolor paper, I'd strongly recommend that you use that uh, to swatch on. Uh, okay, let's start with the beginning. So what I'm going to do is, and here's what, okay, I think, <laughs> okay, listen, look at this. Let's take a quick look at this, right? So because this has been used so much, a lot of the colors are not pure anymore. Like this lemon yellow has so much other blues in it because I've probably picked that up so I'm just going to like keep it a little clean so I get the right uh, color because if you're unboxing yours and you're swatching it for the first time that is not going to be a problem at all so first we just pick up a little bit and I'm going to put a little blubby down here let's go a little closer okay and move this little plant out of the way okay so I'm going to first use this with very less water just to see and then I'm going to just just to see how light it gets right so I, I am using a little bit more water so what I've done is I've, I've the circle I've made with very less water to see what happens when we use less water and then you go in a sequence with whichever colors you have, whatever brand you're using. So we will, and then I'm going to just dilute it a little bit just to see how light it is. Clearly this yellow I've used so much that I barely have any left. Of that yellow this is one of my favorite yellows I think this is cadmium yellow that's what this is so so swatching why do we need to swatch okay I think it's the best way to get to know what your uh, medium looks like what are the different hues in your medium what do they look like when they're concentrated what do they look like with uh, more water so this becomes your ready reckoner and i do this with every new medium that i'm working with i cannot recommend this enough it, it seems like a no-brainer right i mean this is what you do you um, you meet someone new you spend a minute getting to know them it's really the same thing that's what we're doing here we've we've just met <laughs> this lovely little box of paints and we are getting to know them a little bit before we you know spend a day with them <laughs> wouldn't you want to do that so i'm saying let's do the same thing with our materials as well shall we um nice little rainbowy swatch card Yeah, so that went a little out of order, right? Because uh, I would have put this orange maybe somewhere up there. But don't worry about uh, getting it perfect if you've moved your paints around and if you've been using them. Ext Ooh, let's get a little bit more. These are so bright. So uh, let me talk a little bit about my experience with the Winsor & Newton. Uh, I'm very happy with these paints yes they are a little expensive but you know i bought the set almost um i think three years back and it's going to serve me well for a really long time so i think it's really worth uh the investment and considering i also sell original art i think it makes a lot of sense to invest in 
good quality pigments because I want my art to last and I don't want my colors to not be light fast and then just sort of fade away. So it's really important that uh, I understand the purpose of uh, the medium I'm using or the particular brand I'm using and then make sort of a uh, an informed decision about what I want to spend. Lovely. This is raw umber, I think. Yeah. I think I have space for... Wait, what did I use now? Oh, okay, this is the one next. Again, gone a little out of sequence. This is burnt sienna, and I think we should have... You know, a lot of my art practice, I've been really trying not to get too uh, bogged down by getting things right, being too perfect, uh, trying to be more in the flow. And that's one thing that watercolors does for sure, right? With watercolor, you, you've got to sort of be present and accept and embrace mistakes. And that's really what my... Uh, my secret garden course which I'm launching in in just 10 days is about it is about being present it is about letting water flow and not really get too uh, obsessive about things about perfectionism and really letting water do the work it's supposed to do and what's water's work water's got to flow right and um, and really, honestly, for the longest time, I wasn't using watercolor like watercolor. I was using it in a very sort of trying to control it, using it like oh, with, without heroing its quality. And, and, and translucency is the beauty of watercolor, right? That's, that's, uh, that's what we use watercolor for. And instead, I was using it like wash. And it took me a little bit of unlearning, really, to do that. We've moved on to the bluesies. I love blue. There was a time when I think my wardrobe only had blue. And most of the blue was indigo. And now, of course, as I grow older, I'm getting more fond of pinks as well. Oh, I love that blue. This is tallow blue. It's one of my favorite blues. Just gorgeous, right? Hmm. Hey, where am I now? I got, yeah, okay, I'm on the right blue. Yeah, what's this one? This one, I think it's cerulean. Yeah, this one is cerulean. Kiersha and I were watching Devil Wears Prada yesterday again because we felt like watching a chick flick, <laughs> that sort of thing. And then I remember this whole rant that Meryl Streep goes into about cerulean blue. I don't know if you remember that because we were like, whoa, okay, we get it. Clothes are important to you. Not so much to us. Uh, but yeah, but we get the importance of cerulean blue. I sort of get it as an artist. When I want cerulean blue, I want cerulean blue. Thank you. I don't want uh, Prussian blue, you know. Okay, so the last two, of course, as you can see, I've barely, oh, wait, let me, yeah, now you can see it. I've barely used the white. So that's, okay, I'm sorry, just do this one. What's this one? This is black. Okay, black, black. So what happens, what's interesting about white is, of course, you don't use white, right? If you want, if you want lightness in watercolor, you use more water. But when you use that's what the white looks like. Let's just put that down there. So when if, if I add white to any of my watercolors, they start behaving like gouache. So that there's a little uh, trivia for you. I'm going to wait for this to dry out, and then I am going to write their names down because, luckily, you know, I had swatched this a hundred years back and I had written their names down. So I, all I need to do is compare which is which, and then put the name down and. Hopefully, I'll be able to squeeze in the name somewhere. So this is like something super important that, I'd, that I strongly recommend you do is really sit down, play some music, listen to a podcast or an audio book, 
um, and swatch your materials and get to know them and this becomes a ready reckoner for you so every time you're you, you sort of you don't have to second guess yourself you know initially when you start painting out you know when you start painting you don't have to second guess yourself and wonder should I use this red or should I use that red you can always go back and and then say okay that's that's really not the hue I want this is the other hue that I want I hope that was useful and I hope you're sort of excited to go and swatch that material that you've either not unboxed yet or you've been using but not really bothered to swatch uh, do let me know how that goes and my loves do not forget to subscribe and uh, comment and like uh, this video and uh, stay snug lovely people